Okay, well, good evening. So today, Monday, was not an outside day. We uh, <clears throat> tackled some, I guess, online things. And uh, actually, Buddy got a rocket thing in the mail, so we put that together. Uh, I just came out to the shop. I'm going to give it a quick shot of paint is what it says to do. So... Hopefully on Wednesday, it's supposed to warm up again, we can <coughs> go out and launch that rocket. But this is what we're dealing with right now up here in Northern Alberta. So she's, uh, it's only minus 20, but there's a pretty decent wind. Definitely uh, enough that the wind chill factor is uh, fairly high and uh, I don't know if the phone does it justice or not, but oops, it's uh, <clears throat> blowing all over. It's really poor, really poor weather. So we're quite sheltered down in the yard, thankfully. How do I get out of here? But it is, uh, whew, it's cold. So another thing I think I'm gonna do here when I get back in the house is uh, about a week ago, we planted a, uh, couple bags of wheat seeds, wheat, not weed, uh, some barley, a little bit of peas, and some oats. So the oats I'm gonna leave for a little longer. They seem to take a little extra time to germinate, but the, uh, the barley we did last year's seed, plus we did barley from this year. The wheat we did this year's seed. My dad already did last year's seed and it was good. So we'll see, uh, that's probably what the video will be about. The germ, we do that, uh, my dad said they used to do it around Easter, but pretty much after the new year, once the grain has cooled off once out of the field, I'm not exactly sure what that, there's a scientific thing they claim that happens. I believe when the, I don't know, something changes in the kernel anyways, from the time that it's harvested till it uh, is in storage for a while. So you're supposed to leave it in storage for a while before you test your germ. Uh, lots of stuff. Canola especially, you cannot save your seed. So you'll very rarely find a farmer that is going to do a germination test on his canola because it's illegal. I, I think there might be one or two varieties yet, a Polish variety, stuff like that, that maybe you can save your seed. We don't grow that stuff. Uh, we tried to put it with our peas a few times and it did work out because Polish is an earlier variety than the... Uh, what is in here? Polish is an earlier variety than the, the Liberty canola that we grow and then the, uh, the other varieties, the uh, Roundup Readies and stuff. So peas themselves are an early crop. So when we put them together, they were both mature about the same time. Uh, but then you were, <clears throat> the, there was a yield loss with Polish canola. I mean, the best you can really ever do on that is, I don't know, let's be honest, maybe 30 bushels to the acre. So uh, these newer varieties, you should be able to get 40 or 50 or 60, depending on the fertilizer and stuff like that. Uh, they take a few extra days, but I mean, if you're going to get high prices for your crop, you may as well get more bushels. So we switched to that. We did put clear field with our peas for a while. That's another one you can't save the seed. So uh, you're always buying it. Uh, clear field gives you a few more spraying options. But this is not going to be a video about peas and canola mixes. It's going to be a video about... Seed germinations, we'll see where we end up. Uh, we can save our barley seed, we can save our wheat seed, we can save our pea seed, and we can save our oat seed as long as they grow. So when I get tying into the bags here, we gotta count them up. We like to see over 80% germination rate on the seed. Not only that, you like to see pretty good, uh, pretty good vigor uh, with it. So you wanna see it growing right away basically within a week and then, uh, and, and growing, you know, pretty vigorously, I guess that, uh, it's got good roots and, uh, starts to make a good, uh, stem, I guess. So we will, uh, I'm going to get Buddy's rocket painted up here real quick, get the first coat on it, and then, uh, we'll go in and, uh, check out our seeds. Oh, I get first. 
So I think this one was counted by somebody else before. And uh, one, so that's nine, so this would be 90. <clears throat> 91% so this one was a little bit late coming that's why it was still in with these that didn't grow and then the rest you can see are uh, after seven days in a paper towel that's what you want to see so I'm just going to quickly count these and make sure it was right then we'll write on this bag this was counted already so it says 10 didn't 10 didn't grow <clears throat> so anyways this one did come that would work so this is uh 91 so most likely that's where we'll get our seed from for this year <clears throat> Okay, well, good evening. So, there's not much more than uh, what you just saw. You, uh, we put out 100 seeds, and then uh, just for easy math, right? So, if six don't grow, you got 94%. So, we ended up with about 94% on our this year's peas. We ended up with about 76% on one of our bins of this year's barley. We ended up with 20, see, and this is why you do this. So we ended up with 20% germ on the seed we kept over from last year. Now, I don't know why that seed, it can lose its germ. Uh, that's one of the, I guess, the mysteries of the seed, right? You're not supposed to do the germ right off the field. Although if you do the germ, or if you don't, and your combine's throwing over, right away you'll see it growing in the field. So I'm not sure the science behind waiting, you know, waiting a few months or whatever, to do the germ but that's what we're told to do anyways so anyways this barley is about three or four years old uh we had a bin full of it still for seed and uh 20 percent now i just took this out of the bucket right in the front door uh and there was a bit of mold and stuff in the bottom of that bucket so could be a bad sample so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take a load out of that bin when i go to fill my feed bins and i'm going to uh take a whole single axle load out and I'm going to take a sample out of that and then I'll, I'll replant it. Then uh, this year's wheat that we dry, didn't dry, is 97%. So we're going to be good on that. It's backwards 97 through the bag. 97%. And uh, last year's, see this is the thing. This is We took some out of this bin last year and cleaned it for seed and that bin is 88 and the bin that we cleaned is now 20 so there must be could be something wrong there but uh anyways long story short our last year's pea seed was we only got about 10 ton of that left was about 95 percent this year's pea seed is going to be 94 95 percent so we're good on pea seed don't have to buy that when it comes to wheat, we got 97% in our bin beside our seed cleaner, which is awesome because we don't have to truck it. Um, we can clean that up good on wheat seed, don't have to buy that. Oat seed, I did not do yet, but we did one just after Christmas and we got uh, about 97% in our big bin. And I got one on top of the fridge there yet. Uh, that I'm gonna give it, a, I'm gonna give it, I don't know, probably two weeks because that's what I gave the last one. It should be good because all we did was move from that big bin over to the 2750 bushel bin, filled it up, dried it the same way. So hopefully we won't have to buy oat seed and uh, our barley bin, as I said, the seed we had saved from last year, we, Corey just counted that, she had about 20%. That's not good, you wouldn't see that. But we do know that we got a bin that's 88% actually better than that i uh i'm pretty critical as you can imagine and and you should be i mean <clears throat> if there's one that looks like it's kind of growing but not really growing i don't even count it i only count the big vigorous kernels and we got 88 of them so we could be around 90 92 percent germ on our uh on our barley as well so 
that's the long and the short of uh, testing your germ. You can uh, you can take it down to a seed lab. You can send it out. They'll check for uh, they can check for some diseases. They can check for fusarium. They can check for uh, <clears throat> when when you get your germ back. They'll tell you uh, vigorous kernels, non vigorous kernels, and other. I, I can't exactly remember. Some seed labs are different, but uh, that's kind of how that goes. We find that this is as accurate as we need to be, anyways. So we uh, we don't often send our seed out to be germed. And anyways, I guess now we got a bucket of uh, bucket of growings to go off to the chickens. Germing your seed very important. We do it probably. We'll probably do it two more times before March, April, when we'll start cleaning it. And, uh, and, and, and then we'll, we'll be very, very sure of what we have. We like to do it now because uh, right now we're gonna be starting our crop plan and uh, we'll base it basically on how much seed we know that we have. Uh, that's how Corey will start buying chemical seed or chemical and fertilizer based on <clears throat> the available seed that we know we have and, uh, and what we plan to seed this year. So, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow.